What's up, YouTube? Poke Primer here, and I am your coach of the Hazels and Hoopas in the NPBA here to present our season two draft. Ladies and gentlemen, it is about that time. We have made it here to the second season. The playoffs are underway, and we decided, you know what? Well, before the playoffs really get going, you know, why don't we? Why don't we? You know, get the draft for next season out of the way. It won't take us too long. It'll be pretty, pretty laid back, pretty chill thing to do. And you know, it'd be kind of fun. You know, get it, get it done, get it, get it in there, and get it, get it moving on. So that is what happened. We got our draft going, and I had a little bit of inspiration this time around for my draft. If you guys follow the GBA, you guys know one of the top guys that was there this season was. Fizz and the Atlanta Haluchas and his team was very dangerous. It had uh, dual weather support, uh, which is very, very deadly. And I kind of wanted to build off of that, you know, take a few mods that he used and then throw my own couple of spins on it and bring my own uh, mods into the mix to build myself the most interesting team that I could come up with. And that is what I did. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into this. First thing we did is we had the trademark round. Trademarking is basically like how GBA does its franchising, where you can, s where, at least in the GBA, you can select one mod that you had the previous season and keep it. Well, the way we do it is basically we have one round where you can select any mod from any tier and guarantee that mon for your team. Now this this power happened several weeks before the draft even started, and this is why. Uh, basically, the mindset behind that was it would give the coaches time to uh, really plan their drafts out so that nobody had any excuse for drafting poorly. You know, you had the time to pick the best mons for your squad uh, possible and build your team around your trademark and mega pick. The mega pick actually was the following weekend after the trademark picks were done. Oh, hold on. Sorry about that guys. My throat's a little dry actually. I'm gonna bust out this handy dandy uh, jug of Arnold Palmer half and half iced tea right here. I'm trying to get my throat a little bit undry. Get, get this baby going. Oh boy, that feels good. Oh, that's nice. That's the good stuff, man. That's that's gold. But uh, for the trademark round, I I knew I had to scoop up uh, Garchomp. Garchomp was one of the top five mons I wanted on my squad. That I knew I needed to have. I needed to have Garchomp because it has so much potential for us. Uh, it is a rock setter. It is very very fast. It breaks that base 100 speed tier. And it has access to Sand Veil, which part of our dual uh, weather core uh, would be sand related. And Sand Veil actually isn't banned by Smogon, so I could use Sand Veil Garchomp to try and set up and maybe sweep my opponent, which would be really, really great. Uh, also has access to Rough Skin, which is even better because uh, if, we want, if we need to build this thing bulky, this thing could come out, take some hits, and damage the opponent at the exact same time uh, without too much of a hassle. I mean, it, gets a, it also gets a lot of really p punishing moves. It gets Outrage, Outrage, Dragon Claw, Crunch. It gets access to Stone Edge. Uh, Earthquake, I've probably said. Poison Jab, Iron Head for Fairies. Uh, pretty much everything that the Garchomp could possibly need uh, for coverage moves is here. Uh, I decided for Garchomp, I was going to call it Ripster. Ripster was the leader of the Street Sharks in that old TV show uh, from back when I was, like, really, really, really little. Like, like I'm pretty sure the show came out, like, when I was, like, two, and I ended up watching it when I was a little bit older. And it was a fantastic show, really, really good show, but Ripster was the leader of them, so I figured, you know, he's basically a shark, kind of like a Street Shark, you know, he's a ground shark kind of type thing, so, you know, I figured it was a... Uh, it was a very fitting nickname. So, as I said before, the Mega Round came uh, one week later, and I already knew what Mega I wanted, 
and conveniently I had the first pick in the mega round so I was actually able to scoop him up and that was mega Charizard Y aka Spyro 100% this thing click Spyro the dragon and this thing is absolutely devastating uh, it does hit base 100 so we can speed tie with all the other base 100s out there which is fantastic for us uh, those things are you know a huge threat you know things like Mew Victini, Jirachi, you know, all those mons are swimming around somewhere. Uh, they, I'm pretty sure all of them went in the draft at some point or another. So we are going to have to deal with them at one point or another. So having a base 100 on our squad that can uh, match speed with them and potentially uh, take them on very nicely uh, is huge for us because... Megazard Y is is just so good. It's just so good. Look at that special attack stat, man. Look at that special attack. Base 159 special attack. This thing is absolutely ridiculous. Hits so hard. And with base 104 attack, this thing can hit on both sides. Which is even better in the draft format because... If I want, I can bring uh, a Dragon Dance Mega Charizard Y. If I really wanted to. Or if I, I could run a single physical move, just one physical move, just for a little bit of extra coverage so that uh, Zard Y uh, can do what it does and do it more effectively. Uh, with its drought ability, uh, this gives us our first piece of weather. This will give us access to the sun, so we're going to build off of that later on in the team, uh, which is really, really great for us. Uh, this thing is just going to put in a lot of work. I think I think it's going to be... Uh, hugely important to our team. This is definitely 100% the team leader here. Uh, that drought. Uh, we're going to be hitting fire blasts on everything. We have access to solar beam. Which is great for us because uh, we can actually uh, hit things very, very hard with that. And hit those water types that want to try to come and encounter us. Uh, we have air slash for another stab. Uh, we do have access to the Dragon Dance. Uh, it, also, one thing I didn't know is we do get Defog, which is definitely an option because, I'll be honest, our team doesn't have a lot of hazard removal. That's something we're definitely going to fix in Free Agency, for sure. Not sure who I'm going to drop yet. Uh, we're going to see how the first week or two goes. Uh, if I end up needing hazard removal, I pretty, I, I'm pretty sure I will, but if I don't end up needing it, you know, it could be... I don't know. If I if I don't have it, it could be something that will bite me in the ass later on. But I think for right now, I don't need it necessarily. But yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, that's going to be... That's, that's Mega Charizard Y. This thing's going to put in a lot of work for us this season, for sure. Definitely a huge threat to a lot of teams. Uh, basically, you can just come out and just click a move and break through walls. And do stuff like that for days. So the OU, OU round came along, and my first pick, I knew what I wanted, and there was a story behind it. See, the mod that I wanted was originally trademarked by one of our old coaches. Uh, but due to, uh, some, due to some issues, due to some issues uh, that we had with him, uh, we decided to let him go. Uh, we, we, we let him go. So... Uh, that trademark was then put back on the market. So when it came time for the actual OU draft, I basically had to sit around and wait and hope that it didn't get scooped up, hope that it didn't get taken from me. And lo and behold, it didn't, and we get our sand setter in the form of Tyranitar. Holy crap, we got Tyranitar. Now, I know Titar is not fast. That's fine. I don't need Titar to be fast. I don't. I really don't need T-Tar to be that fast, honestly. That's first thing. This thing is going to set up sand, and that's going to be his main job. Secondly, look at his attacking stats. 134 and 95. This thing can be fully special and can be fully physical and do both beautifully. Absolutely beautifully. Secondly, look at his defenses. Base 100 HP, base 110 defense, base 100 special defense. Holy crap. 
This thing is so insanely fat. Look at 404 HP stat. Look at his 367 attack stat without any boosts. This thing's adamant. It's probably breaking. It's probably coming close to 403. That's insane, dude. Insane. Uh, Tyranitar is an absolute monster. Uh, it provides us with a second stealth rocker, which is definitely cool. Uh, it has coverage moves for pretty much everything that we ever can need. Uh, every typing we can need a coverage move for, it has it 100%, which is great. Uh, just, I mean, just, I don't even, have, I don't even need to describe it. Like, just look, look as we go down, like, the coverage that this thing gets. Like, this is craziness. This is actually insane, dude. Actually insane. So there's a lot of things here, and there's a lot of strategies that I really want to want to test out uh, with Tyranitar. So we're definitely going to see what we can do with it, but this thing can fill a lot of different roles. It can be bulky, it can be offensive, it can do pretty much anything I want it to. And on top of that, it does set up the sand, which is what I really wanted it for. So thankfully, we were able to scoop him up, and now we have Tyranitar on the team. The nickname I gave him. Tommy, it's very specific. Uh, my childhood was revolved around the Power Rangers, like, heavily. Like, I was a huge Power Rangers nutcase. And my favorite one was uh, Tommy Oliver, who was the Green Ranger in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series. So when I got older, uh, I pretty much started naming all of my Tyranitars Tommy, because it reminded me of the Green Dragon Zord that he had in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So... That's that's just kind of a nickname that's stuck, and I'm going to go with it. You know, fuck it. Next up, I wanted another wall breaker. I wanted, and I've already used one of the event legendaries from, uh, from, uh, 6th Gen in a league format. So I wanted to try out another one. And I already had my Mega, so obviously I wasn't going Mega Diancy, and I wasn't really feeling regular Diancy for this one, not this time around. So I didn't end up doing that. But what I did end up doing is scooping up Hoopa Unbound as my second OU pick. And what else do I need to say but this thing breaks any wall you have? Base 170 special attack, base 160 attack. This thing is going to punch holes through everything. Literally everything. Nothing will stand in front of this thing and say, Oh, I can take this hit nicely. No, you can't. No, you actually can't. Hoopa Unbound will tear you apart with all six of them floating arms. This thing is absolutely monstrous. It gets access to Hyperspace Hole and Hyperspace Fury, both of which are stab, which do break through protect, so you can't, like, protect... To scout things with this thing. Uh, it prevents you from being able to do that. It has a monstrous base 130 special defense stat. Which coupled with a potential assault vest. Could make this thing almost impervious to beat. Uh, sadly it's defense and HP stats aren't all that great. It's not all that fast. At the end of the day base 80 speed isn't terrible. And is very very workable. Uh, in the league format. You know, for a lot of different things. And uh, overall, this thing's just here for coverage and wall-breaking potential. Uh, it does have the potential to set up. It does get access to Nasty Plot, Calm Mind. Uh, does it get access to any physical setup moves? I don't believe it does. I don't believe it gets access to anything that sets up its physical attack. Um... No, it doesn't. It doesn't look like it does. That's fine. That's totally fine. He doesn't need any extra physical attack, to be totally honest. This thing is still, though, actually one of the most disgustingly uh, busted-looking mons that I've ever seen. Gets access to Trick, which is kind of fun. I could mess with that. Uh, I can Toxic Stall. It has Taunt. Uh, signal Beam, which is kind of ironic because it's four times weak to bug. Uh, Shadow Ball. All the elemental punches are there. Knock off. Hyperspace Fury, Hyperspace Hole. 
uh, which cannot be protected against. Uh, gunk shot. Focus blast. Uh, energy ball. Just so many things this thing can do. So many options for it. it it's really insane. Uh, I'm really, really excited to use Hoopa and see how well Hoopa does in the league format. Uh, really, really looking forward to testing this thing out and seeing seeing how well it can do. Uh, the nickname, uh, I decided to go with Sultan. Uh, I already named my Thunderuses uh, Robin Williams or Thor, depending on, you know, the situation. So I didn't want to name this thing Robin. I didn't want to be generic and go Genie. Uh, Aladdin didn't sound all that right. Uh... So I decided to just name him Sultan. I don't know. I I I don't I don't know what I'm gonna go with there. Okay, it's kind of Sultan. Sultan seems legit. Sultan seems fine. If I ever decide to change it, you'll be you guys will be the first ones to know. Uh so but that's gonna be Hoopa. Next up was UU, and I made sure to get the first UU pick. And there were two mods they wanted. The first one was Cobalion, which I really really wanted, but the other one I needed to prioritize over. Which kind of sucks because by prioritizing over to the other one, I uh, ended up uh, losing uh, Cobalion for it. But it ended up being worth it because uh, I was able to scoop up Heliolisk. Basilisk the Heliolisk, this boy right here. This straight, straight savage is absolutely disgusting. He has access to Sand Veil. Um, this thing is base 109, special attack, and speed, which is utterly insane. Love it. So that's crazy. That's actually crazy. Uh, so it's going to hit really, really hard overall. It gets access to solar power, which put in the sun that's set up by uh, Charizard Y. This thing hits like a truck. It's basically a free uh, choice specs, which is insane because a free choice specs coupled with a choice scarf. This thing's going to outspeed so many things and hits so, 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 so hard. Uh, which is really, really great. Really, really great. Uh, so we have that as an option. Uh, this thing gets access to dry skin, which could give us an immunity to water type attacks, which is great. Uh, just it, it it has abilities that cover all of what we need. On top of that, on top of that, this thing is insanely powerful and easily one of the most dangerous uh, mons on our team by far. It's a fast electric type, which everyone knows. Fast electric types do amazing in this format, so. That's even better. Uh, overall, this thing is going to put in crazy amounts of work for us, and I'm really, really excited. Really, really excited to have Heliolisk. Basilisk is going to put in so much work for us, and I'm, I'm just, I'm just beyond hyped. So this is one of the main. This is one of the main mons that was from Fizz's team that I got. Uh, this is this plus uh, Garchomp, Megazard Y, and Tyranitar are four of the five main mons I wanted to scoop up. The last one you will see later on in the draft, and it will be very, very exciting. Um, very, very exciting. But uh, yeah, so here's our Heliodisc. 
Next up, we uh, we had to settle for a mod that I wasn't necessarily a fan of. Ugh. This thing is, the mod I got actually isn't bad. Uh, it provides us with a status absorber in some scenarios, which would be kind of cool. And if we can absorb a status, that would be really great. Um, also provides us with a potential sweeper with access to the ability Moxie. You guys already know we have Heracross. Sap whore the Heracross because in the anime all he ever does is eat that sass. He's eat that sap. He's always running for those sap trees. So it's really, really crazy. I'm excited to have uh, Heracross on the team. It's going to be interesting to see how it all works out. I'm kind of interested to see how it pans out. So, uh, Heracross is going to put in some work. Uh, it does have that Monsters Base 125 attack stat. Base 85 speed isn't anything to laugh at, and it has overall decent bulk. It does have a 4 times weakness to flying, which I'm not a huge fan of. But not a lot of people... Not a lot of people end up uh, bringing flying-type moves. I know there's a lot of times that I didn't end up bringing flying-type moves to matchups. Uh, where a four times weakness might have sat. So. So, it could potentially. Could potentially uh, give us an issue uh, at some point, but we'll see what happens. If someone brings hidden power flying, more power to you. You caught me off guard, and I appreciate it. But, uh, regardless, Heracross provides us a physical wall breaker that could do a lot of interesting things for our team. Uh, not too much to say about Heracross. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, next up, we got into RU, and I wanted a dual regenerator core. So, originally, I wanted to first scoop up Amoongus. Well, Amoongus was gone. Then I wanted Tangrowth. Well, then Tangrowth. Tangrowth will... That one disappeared so that was really depressing so I ended up coming up with a uh, other, another mod that I wanted in later tiers to cover my grass typing so I, I decided to wait on that one uh, and I'm just scooping my water type uh, which ended up being a Loma Mola. I called this thing Palindrome because its name is exactly a Palindrome. There's a lot of mods that are Palindromes, but I, you know, I figured this is the best name I could come up with because I never use a Loma Mola. I think this thing is. I, I used to think this thing was completely trash, but after I learned the power of a generator, I now know otherwise. This thing is actually godlike. This thing eats a lot more hits uh, than you might think. And I, any time that you can have a wall like this, you, you definitely go for it. Uh, base 165 HP is actually disgusting. You max that thing out, you're hitting 534. That's absolutely insane. That HP stat is too damn high. Too damn high. It's actually insane. So, definitely... Uh, intrigued uh, to see uh, definitely intrigued to see what Elamola can do for us it's going to eat a lot of hits it can hit skull burns it has access to uh, knockoff for utility purposes this thing does a lot of work in a lot of different ways and I'm really really intrigued to see what is going to go down here uh, with a Loma Mola on the squad. 
Next up, I got really annoyed because we basically got sniped in every way possible throughout the course of RU, so I decided to just grab a monster that a lot of people really don't know how to deal with. And that monster is Danook. Danook, Mr. Exploud. Basically, you see right there, choice specs and boom bursts, they're pretty much going to be there 99% of the time I decide to bring this thing. Because, let's be honest, let's be totally honest here. Uh, I honestly think that, uh, I honestly think that uh, Boom Burst is the only move that you really need for an X-Cloud. It hits everything, and unless there's something that heavily resists it, it's going to pretty much two-hit KO just about anything. Uh, so that's pretty much the mindset behind x -Bloud. It literally is just here to blow things up. It has coverage moves for the things that do resist. It gets access to things like Surf and Overheat to hit those... Uh, rock and steel types respectively so that's pretty much all you honestly need uh, as long as you can handle those typings you're pretty much good to go and just can click boom burst and nothing is going to appreciate it in any way uh, so that's 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 the whole goal behind uh, Danook here Danook is gonna basically uh, do just that and nuke the living hell out of all of our opponent's teams. That's pretty much about it. So, with that, ended that round, and we went into NU, and I knew I wanted a poison type. And, of course, as the draft went on, I was unlucky enough to have really low picks in NU. So, when it came time for my pick, I looked at what poison types were left, and there wasn't really any at all. <sighs> So now we ended up in a situation where a certain somebody came back for a visit. A certain somebody has come back to us. He was with us, well I should say now she was with us in the PFC. And we dropped her a few weeks in. Because I just couldn't find a place for her on the team. I placed her with a vile plume, which ended up getting dropped several weeks later after not doing anything. And I had my regrets at that point of why I dropped her in the first place. Well, now I have the chance. Now I have the chance to. run it again. It's back. We have Garboder. And the nickname is specific for a reason. It's an inside joke between us and a lot of my friends. Uh, we refer to our one friend Kelly as trash. She's as she's like hopelessly addicted to the miraculous ladybug. Uh, she refers to it as her trash. So we then just call her trash. And I figured it was... Uh, Legit enough to refer to Garboder as Kelly. So we have Kelly the Garboder here. Uh, Aftermath has a great ability because if they take us out with a physical hit, which most likely this thing's going to be meant to bulk hits, and if you know if a physical hit comes through, you know we can get about 25% off on a uh, 25% off on them, which would be great uh, as we die. Which let's be honest here, 25%. Uh, adds up really fast really really fast so that's that's going to be fun to that's going to be fun to have uh this thing does get access to gunk shot which uh, hits really really hard pain split for recovery purposes which is great uh, also gets access to two forms of hazard hazards with uh toxic spikes and spikes so that's uh really really exciting uh we have access to those on the team Overall, uh, Garboder provides me a decent wall, a very, very good uh, hazard setter, and overall, uh, a decent mon, honestly, and I actually am kind of excited to try and make Garboder work this season. 
And maybe, uh, just maybe, uh, make this thing uh, effective. But, uh, yeah, so there's there's Kelly, our garboder, which is pretty legit. So, uh, with that, we're going to move on to NU round two, and at this point, I knew I needed a steel type. I needed a steel type. I needed something to eat some hits, and I need to eat them badly. Uh, like, really badly. Like, I need something to actually, like, take a hit. Like, holy crap, something needs to take a hit. Well... The best steel type I could find at that point. Because there was nothing good in PU. Absolutely nothing good. At all. I was able to scoop up Stainless the Steelix. Stainless is great because it does provide me another rock setter. It does have access to the ability Sturdy. So it can guarantee getting those rocks up if I need it to. If the rocks are that important for the matchup. It has uh, moves uh, available to set up like rock smat or rock polish. I believe it does get rock polish. I believe it does get rock polish. Yeah, it does get rock polish to get speed up. So it can t actually potentially become a dangerous sweeper in some scenarios. Uh, and with its sheer force ability, even with a base a special attack of 55, uh, sheer force boosted. Special attacks will still do large amounts of damage. Uh, as well with a base 85 attack stat, it can hit very, very hard with the Sheer Force ability. Uh, so it definitely uh, not only can take some hits, but it can dish out some very decent ones as well. So Stainless is going to put in some work for us this season. Uh, Stainless, the nickname, is obviously uh, derived from the nickname used by the King Nappy in, the, in his... Uh, Pokemon Gold, Silver, uh, Soul Link with the Shady Penguin. Uh, it's it's the the nickname just kind of stuck. I mean, it's it's too good of a nickname. I'm I'm sorry if I, anyone gets pissed off that I'm borrowing it, but I, I, come on, it's just too good. It's too too good. How do you how do you beat that? But uh, yeah, so that's gonna be uh, stainless. Next up, we got to PU, and there was one mon I wanted, and like everyone else wanted it, but. I was actually able to finagle and beg my way into scooping it up, and it's the last mon that I scooped up from Fizz's team. Bella Buster the Stoutland. The nickname came from, I believe it came from uh, Damien, the coach of the now uh, Phoenix City Cacturns now. Uh, he, I believe he has a dog named Bella. I'm not sure if he has one named Buster. I think that, that was mentioned as well, but the word Buster was in our conversation as well. And I put the two together. I figured that'd be kind of cool. Uh, Bella Buster sounds like a badass nickname. Uh, it's really, really dangerous. Uh, this thing can be very, very bulky. Very, very bulky with the access to Intimidate. I mean, look at those stats. Base 90, defense, special defense. Uh, I can make this thing very, very fat and can do a lot of crazy things. And, uh, yeah, really, really help us out in a pinch. But the main reason I got this thing is for its Sand Rush ability. Now, for those who don't know, Sand Rush doubles this Pokemon's speed when uh, subjected to sand, when in the sand. Now... With a great sand setter like Tyranitar on the team, we have the potential to easily get sand up and then allow, then definitely allow uh, Bella Buster to pretty much just uh, sweep through teams uh, with with Sand Rush going. Uh, we can pretty much just tear through people with it, and it's going to put in a crazy amount of work. Return from this thing does insane damage. Uh, and this thing has so many coverage moves. Uh, it allows us to easily tear through teams without too much of an issue. And, uh... 
yeah, Bella Buster is gonna put in a crazy amount of work, and I actually want to make this thing the MVP. I want I want Bella Buster to be the MVP of the league, if I can pull it off. I don't know if I will, but you know what? We're gonna try. So uh, with that, uh, we're gonna move on to our last mon, which is the mon that I chose as my grass type, as a replacement for all those other regenerator mons that were lost to us. And it ended up being Tangela. Eevee Light Tangela is great because it does have regenerator as well. So we do still have a dual regenerator core. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. Uh, it does have pretty piss poor special defense, but we do have uh, do have uh, the potential to uh, put a lot of investment into it and make it potentially work for us. Uh, lastly, I mean, I mean, if, if you look at its defense stat, it definitely handles that very nicely. So its defense stat's very, very awesome. Uh, and this thing is gonna can switch into pretty much any physical attack ever without too much of an issue. Uh, this thing also does get chlorophyll. So with access to the sun, we do have potential for a chlorophyll sweeper uh, with that base 100 special attack. I uh, could come in uh, chlorophyll tear through some mons and put in some work. Uh, it does get access to knockoff for utility purposes, which is awesome. Another knockoff mon is very nice. So uh, there's that, and uh, yeah. Uh, that's gonna be our team. I don't really have much else to say here. Uh, yeah, it's just I'm really excited. Uh, the nickname for Tangela actually decided to just say uh, haircut, as in like, do I really need a haircut? I think you do, but you, but he really doesn't. Uh, it's it's a dumb nickname, but you know what? Haircut is here to stay. Uh, haircut's gonna put in some work for us this season. I'm really really excited. I I think uh, haircut has the potential to really shine on our team. But, uh, yeah, without any further ado, uh, we're going to get out of here. Uh, if you guys are excited to see the Hazels and Hoopas in MPBA Season 2, please make sure to leave a like down below. And uh, let me know what you guys feel about that little intro that we had at the beginning there. Uh, uh, this was acquired from uh, Ronnie, the coach of the Tampa Bay Dust Noirs. I believe he got it from Damien. Uh, th Literally, uh, I think I think it's one of the coolest things ever, and it really increased the quality of these Season 2 uh, videos. And I'm really, really excited that we have this, so please... Uh, Please uh, make sure to show your support for that. Uh, make sure to leave a like and uh, support for that. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to get out of here, guys. Uh, talk to you guys later.